Good evening and welcome to Grace Church Cathedral. This is evening prayer and a meditation for Thursday, the 20th of June. Evening prayer, if you'd like to follow along, begins on page 117. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, We sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Psalms appointed for this evening are Psalms 85 and 86. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. You have withdrawn your fury and turned yourself from your wrathful indignation. Restore us then, O God, our Savior. Let your anger depart from us. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you prolong your anger from age to age? Will you not give us life again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. Keep watch over my life, for I am faithful. Save your servant who puts his trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, and great is your love toward all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the time of my trouble I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor anything like your works. All nations you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, you do wondrous things, and you alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the nethermost pit. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent men seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed, because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. All who have sinned apart from the law will also perish apart from the law, and all who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous in God's sight, but the doers of the law who will be justified. 
When Gentiles who do not possess the law do instinctively what the law requires, then these, though having not the law, are a law to themselves. They show what the law requires is written on their hearts, to which their own conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts will accuse or perhaps excuse them on the day when, according to my gospel, God, through Jesus Christ, will judge the secret thoughts of all. But if you call yourself a Jew and rely on the law but, and boast of your relation to God and know His will and determine what is best because you are instructed in the, in the law, and if you are sure that you are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in the darkness, a corrector of the foolish, a teacher of children, having in the law the embodiment of knowledge and truth, you then that teach others, will you not teach yourself? While you preach against stealing, do you steal? You that forbid adultery, do you commit adultery? You that abhor idols, do you rob temples? You that, break, that, that boast in the law, do you dishonor God by breaking the law? For as it is written, the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. The word of the Lord. So we have St. Paul writing a letter to the community in Rome. And he's addressing mostly those of the Jewish faith. And one of the early controversies in the church that crops up is what to do with Gentiles who are coming to faith in Jesus. What to do in terms of including them, in terms of how do we treat them, how do we observe, uh, how, do, how are they supposed to observe Jewish customs, Jewish laws, because Jesus was a Jew and the religious tradition out of which the church springs is Judaism. And so Paul is trying to address this kind of this controversy about what do we do about Gentiles who are coming to faith in Christ? What do we do in terms of including them? How do we um, make them a part of this community? And he, what the argument is, and I think this is a wonderful argument that he's giving us, is that those who are doing the right thing, those who are observing righteousness, even though they might not have the law, the whole idea that undergirds the law is written on their hearts. And that is essentially what the whole aim of Jesus' message is for us, is that God's law be written not on tablets, not on pages, not on, you know, uh, with, with a pen and ink, but that the law of God be written on our hearts. And so that we observe God's law in our everyday lives, in our breathing, in our sitting down, in our rising up, in our eating, in our drinking, in our sleeping. All of the different aspects of life that we know as part of everyday life, that God's law is written in our hearts so that every single thing that we do, we're obeying the commandment to love God and to love our neighbor. Those, those two great commandments, or the great commandment, the greatest commandment. That's what the law being written on our hearts is all about. And so Paul, again, he's, he's addressing the community. He's saying, look, if those who are out there are doing what the law requires and they're actually observing the law as, as any good person would do, even though they're not supposed to observe it because they're not Jewish, that means that they're doing what the law requires. And that's a good thing. And we should celebrate that and give thanks to God for that. And not sort of, you know, look at those folks and say, oh, well, they don't, they're not observing the law in the way that we are, the way that we expect. Instead, we should say, thanks be to God. They're doing what the law requires. They're loving God. They're loving their neighbor. And that means that they're part of the, the community of the faithful. So, whenever we find ourselves, and I think this is, this is one of the important keys, whenever we find ourselves looking askance at someone who's not observing their faith in the way that we think that they ought to, we should check ourselves and say, you know, if the law of, uh, of God, to love God and to love your neighbor, is written on their hearts just because they're different than we are or they're observing the tradition in a little bit of a different way than we are, that doesn't matter. If they're observing the law of love, that's what matters. That's what matters the most. And so it's not for us to, to cast aspersions or to say, well, they're not, um, they're not saying their prayers the way that I think they should say their prayers. And they're not doing church the way I think that, we should, that they should be doing church. They're not doing it like we are. That's not our job to cast aspersions or to cast judgment or to say that their, their faith is somehow lacking or their, their 
commitment to Jesus is somehow less than ours is. Our job is simply to love God and to love our neighbor. That's it. And if they are doing essentially the same thing in a little bit of a different way than we are, that's fine. That's fine too. Because everyone's going to do it a little bit differently. But if all of our focus, if all of our attention is geared towards loving God to the best of our ability, loving our neighbor to the best of our ability, it's going to take a different shape for different people. But it's all the same job. It's all the same work. And if all of us are doing that work, the world will be a better place. As long as we're not looking each over, over each other's shoulders going, well, I think you could do it better that way. Our job is simply to love God and to love our neighbor to the best of our ability and let the chips fall where they may. We continue with the Magnificat. <clears throat> My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses, we entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear, and that all may be reconciled before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and administer your justice with compassion for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, support us all the day long until shadows lengthen and evening comes and the busy world is hushed, and the fever of life is over, and our work is done. And then, O Lord, in your mercy, grant us safe lodging, holy rest, and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary, 
Bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. At this time I invite your own intercessions and thanksgivings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. May the silver light of the moon guide your steps in the darkness and the crickets sing you on your way home. And until we meet again, God keep you in the palm of his hand. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this evening and remain with you always.